I would like to share with you how to make an electric deer cart. For many years I used the deer cart which was purchased from Cabela's, similar to the one you see. The first thing that needed to be done was to cut the axle off of that cart. After the axle was off, several plates were welded onto the cart with quarter inch bolt studs to accommodate the mounting brackets for the motor. It was also necessary to weld several braces onto the cart. Uh, you can see the two cross braces on the right and left side and the U-shaped braces on each end and the cross brace across the center with two holes. Those braces will be used to hold the batteries and the control box as you will see later. The two ends of the cross braces have holes in them. On both sides of the card you can see the holes drilled which will later accept a brush bar which will be added later. The motor that was used to power this cart was from an old Amigo wheelchair. It was a Unipack. It's a 24 volt uh, motor. You can see the mounting brackets that will be going into the studs that were welded on earlier. The motor had a brake which was removed and a plastic cap was put on to make sure that uh, the motor was waterproof. As you can see, this was a 24 volt uh, motor. Uh, DC with a rated RPM of 2570. The axle of the motor measured three-fourths of an inch, which was a problem because it did not match the diameter of the existing uh, wheels that were on the cart. So some modifications needed to be made. A pipe was used that had an inside diameter of three-quarters of an inch and an outside diameter of one inch. The wheel had to be, bearing had to be taken out and a hole drilled to accommodate the one inch diameter of the, uh, of the pipe. After the hub was drilled, the pipe was inserted all the way through the hub on both sides and welded on both the inside and the outside. The next step was to mount the motor. The motor was simply lifted in onto the studs that were welded on earlier and bolted on with a double lock nut. The wheels were then added and a quarter inch bolt went through the hole in the hub and the axle and was connected by a locking nylon nut. Boxes were then built for the control area and the batteries using one quarter inch plywood and three quarter inch L aluminum brackets. You can see the holes on the top for the wires and on the end you can see the place where the one battery will be uh, installed. A second box was built for the uh, other battery which will slide on to the first unit once the first unit is installed. This unit requires two 12 volt batteries connected in series giving a total of 24 volts. There are 12 amps per battery. The heart of this system is the controller. This controller is a 100 amp controller from eBay. It is used to control the speed of the cart. The controller comes with a potentiometer. It also has the motor plus and minus and the power plus and minus. The controller is mounted with L brackets in the top compartment of the deer cart and connected to the various components. The switch is connected from the batteries to the controller. It is used to turn the power on and off to the entire cart. I built into the cart a forward and reverse and neutral switch. This is a double pole, double throw switch. The power supply comes from the controller uh, going to the motor and then also the other side to the motor. This enables you to switch the polarity going to the motor and uh, allows the forward and reverse. A voltmeter was also added to the cart. It is connected to the on side of the power switch. This allows you to 
evaluate the power that you have in the cart. This was purchased from FCP Electronics. A cigarette lighter was purchased from Radio Shack uh, and mounted on the cart to enable you to charge the batteries. This was hooked directly to the batteries. To control the speed of the cart, a variable speed throttle was necessary. This throttle hooks directly to the controller uh, potentiometer output. It was purchased from a place called Robot Marketplace. Once all of the connections are made, it is time to put the sliding covers on the top to protect the controller. It is also time to put the sliding covers on the two battery ends that protect the batteries. I then attached the brush guards on the front and on the back of the cart that are designed to protect the battery holders. It is necessary to keep the batteries fully charged at all times. I was able to find this mobile charger 24E which hooks into the 12 volt car battery, converts it to 24 volts. The charger s shuts off if the car battery gets too low, but maintains a trickle charge on the cart batteries. The cart is loaded into the back of the car using ramps. Once the cart is in the car, uh, the charger is plugged in and the switch is off to make sure that the cart remains fully charged at all times. It's time to take the cart out to the woods to see how it functions, taking some pieces of wood out of the woods to make a small bridge across some creeks. be no problem. Even though the cart does not have brakes, the motor provides enough drag that it does not go out of control. Across the bridge seems to be working just fine, and as we turn around and go back up the hill, there seems to be more than adequate power to power the cart up the hill. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much weight it will be able to hold as uh, we get a, a, a deer to put on it. Putting it back in the car uses the ramps that were built. Uh, simply turn the power on, go forward, it climbs right up into the Suburban, and uh, there is absolutely no problem with that. The only thing waiting for now is to find that big deer during hunting season so that we will have a good reason to use the cart to carry a huge deer out of the woods. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Great hunting.